Welcome everybody to another episode of Coach Joshino, which I've changed because <laughs> apparently the first episode, Coach Eno, which is the like Coach and Joshino mixed together, actually means filthy or pig in Spanish, so wasn't a great episode title. So let's just go for Coach Joshino. It might work a bit better. Also, a lot of people are sh sending me videos of them owning and basically just the best that they played. Whereas I kind of just wanted some raw gameplay where they maybe made mistakes so I can do some coaching on it. So today I've changed it up a little bit and what I've done is ask somebody in Discord if I can spectate them in game and watch them and play a game without them being able to say whether it's a good game or a bad game. They had a lot of pressure on them to play it. And today we've got Hal, who is a Makoa that is at 3.8k MR on that character. Uh, so a platinum on the character and also 4.4k I think MMR in general. So it's a relatively high rank, but let's see how they do with their Makoa. Today we're watching Halix G on his Makoa. And the, one of the good things about spectating this way is that we can look at what cards they have on the fly and what items they buy by just pressing tab. I can pause and this is slow-mo. So we're just watching the Makoa spin around with their, their ice balls going into the air. It's actually weird because it looks a bit bugged when you see it this way. Uh, oh well. Um, but let's look at their loadouts. So they've got, this is the big one that a lot of people pick up and I've got in my loadout. Reduce the cooldown of Dredge Anchor by two seconds. Dredge Anchor is your biggest utility and really that hook allows you to bring people into your your range and it allows your allies to kill people. It allows you to focus enemies and generally it's just very important. And this one is quite important as well. You get an extra one ammo every time you hook somebody. And um, this means that if you're reloading or you're low on ammo, you'll definitely be able to get the extra shot off that has the bonus damage when you after you just hook somebody. And yeah, this is definitely an important card and you only really need one level of it because it gives you that uh, bonus shot. Uh, these ones, um, not so, um, like, these are just sort of tasters. That There is a card that actually gives you extra health flatly, and maybe that would be a better idea than just getting the heal, but this is one one idea, getting the shell, sp shell spin to heal you for a thousand if you hit an enemy. Um, I do have this in my loadout, but maybe not to this level, and there's probably other things that you could have uh, to complement it, but um, that's one way of getting heal back. Um, this one here, the Barrier Reef, the shield, uh, means that you can spam the shield a bit more, but um, in general a lot of people do ignore the, the shield on the Makoa because it's so hard to take down um, compared to other shields like Fernando's etc. Um, you may as well just wait out for the cooldown of the shield, but this card be means that you can pretty much spam it, especially if the enemies are hitting it. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's an okay card, um, but let's see how they do anyway. Let's speed it up. Let's go to the go through the gate um, All right. Yeah, okay, so payload spawning in 20 seconds. Okay, there we go um, Back to slow. <laughs> there we go. We're in full speed now. And um, what have they bought? item wise um, or have they, they've, they've got cauterize okay cauterize isn't that great on um, Makoa actually just because you're only sing hitting a single target um, but okay it's better on Ruckus um, he just pulled over the uh, Fernando there using the tactic that I've mentioned quite a lot of times with Makoa dragging them to the side you can see it then again on Maldamba that was great actually he pulled him spinned him and then also dragged him behind him so it was actually double effective um, and then just shielding the uh, the Ying there, doing quite a bit of work because his, his hook was down. That's another good hook on the, the Victor. Um, doing a lot of work here actually. Because the enemy team actually, own, they have two flankers in Sky and Eevee are quite squishy and uh, they only really have the Fernando, the Fernando that can get on point. So the, our team here um, with Howl is a bit of a death ball lineup. This guy has been able to pick up the, the uh, Cassie there but um, it doesn't really matter too much when you've got the two tanks on the point there. Um, one thing that he could have been doing there is look, looking up there, there's a sky on the top. And that's probably one of the, the most important hooks, especially when somebody's got the drop on you and is above you. You want to be picking off the squishy characters um, instead of focusing the tank like he did there. Um, but they were able to chase them off of this choke point. They just don't have a lot on the point to deal with them and the enemy team. And they don't have any like sort of sustain. They can't really stand on the point. And really, they should be trying to pick people off um, from far. Well, just trying to pick people off, which I guess this guy's trying to do. But caught out there again, and the hook actually saved the life of the ruckus there. And he was able to pull him again to the side, and it gave the time for the ruckus, the sexy duck, to basically put out the damage on them. 
um, and chasing down the victor, just a good idea, although that hook there, um, he basically was just looking directly on the enemy, you, you always have to aim to the, to the right because the hook goes to the left, um, and even there he does go for a straight on hook. Um, it does luckily hit because Fernando has a bigger hitbox, but he probably needs to just generally uh, aim a bit more to the right for the hooks. And again here, the, to be honest, they've sort of broken the team here and um, do, just doing really well. Although absolutely everybody left the payload there, I'm just forgetting about it, but I think that's one point. Oh no, just, just that it got there, the Fernando. Um, that sky there, the shorter hook wasn't ideal, but at the same time it means that the the uh, Makoa could get back into it. The Makoa used his ultimate, I don't know whether they needed the ultimate there to be honest, like that was a bit of a wasted ultimate. It's, it's always like a judgement call whether or not you need to use it on the point. Actually, has it just stayed because it was so short? And uh, no, he's actually lost his ultimate, he's on a 10 kill streak though, very well, well done, um, hasn't died yet, doing pretty well. I don't know about this cauterized pickup. The Ying should really be getting cauterized. The Ying probably doesn't need to itemize into Haven so much, whereas the Makoa probably does want to get a Haven. Okay, because he's used his ultimate, he's like, I need morale boost to get the ultimate back again. But that definitely was a wasted ultimate on that point. I don't think it was necessary. Um, I wish we could, I don't know if you can rewind on, on the spectator camera. No, maybe I could have gone back and looked at who was up at the time. But I think most people were up. I'm guessing the Cassie was up and maybe maybe the Ruckus had just died. That's perhaps why he'd done it because he's, they've only got a one kill streak in their their, their list there. Um, back onto the point again. Just generally on this team, um, they, they have a lot of presence on the point. Um, whereas the enemy team only has the Fernando. And look at the Fernando now. They're in a lot of trouble just because they're on their own. Um, but with EV and Sky trying to pick somebody off at the back lines there. They got the, the Cassie again. Um, chasing over, he did get the hook on the EV, um, but was a they were able to ice block, um, and the EV's being quite um, aggressive. Um, the, the one thing that he could do as a Makari, he wasn't really looking up and trying to chase down that EV. The EV's one of the ones that you can bring down um, and deal with, and uh, honestly that was a bit of a waste in the Fernando. You don't really need to be hooking the Fernando that often, unless there's nobody else to hook there. I would have just ignored the Fernando to be honest. You could have kept firing at him, but try to pull that Muldumba in, because that would have been the easy kill. Um, and they were able to capture it there, and I think uh, being aggressive as the tanks, as the Ruckus could have been more aggressive as well. You basically just want to leave your healer on the point, because they're the ones that can sit back and do healing. Um, there's an ultimate for a guy there, might do a lot of damage to him. Uh, it doesn't really matter. It was a bit of a waste, to be honest, from the sky, um, because nobody was really there, because the, the payload already pushed off. Um, I think that uh, they could have saved that one. But maybe this push here would have been better. Um, yeah, chasing down the Fernando, that's great. But yeah, grabbing the Maldamba. He could have actually pulled him to the side there. It would have actually kept him stunned for longer. And that Ying next to him could have got a bit more damage off. But actually, the enemy team are pushing up here. And the Fernando's coming with them. And I think there, that was a fine hook on Fernando. You're just getting the extra damage out um, because of nobody else to hook. Like here, you could wait until... Yeah, there we go. That's actually good. They got the hook on the EV. Basically, just wait until the ice block goes. Get your hook out. Even if they use Saw or try to blink, there's a there's a cooldown before they can blink. I mean, like a, a delay. And also, when they saw that, you can actually hit them in the air while soaring with your hook. And if they've just started, they probably will be still in the hook uh, hitbox. Fortunately, the victor there getting them. I think they probably just overextended a little bit too much because they've gone over this ridge. If you see on the, the bridge there... It sort of dips down, and he was actually really exposed on that other side. If he'd stayed on the side with the payload, he might have survived there. I don't know what the Mako is stopping for. Maybe they're doing a bit of chatting. Oh no, they're grouping up. Okay, I see. So they all wipe there. It's hard to tell because it's confusing because the enemy team are blue. So you always think that they're allies, but this is we're on red team. And that was, that was actually pretty good. And as a, a team, they're doing well, and they're actually all going together to the right. Are they all going there? The, maybe the Makoa did didn't need to flank, but, uh, um, and ulti again on the, the end of the point, and I'm not sure about this one. He is able to sort of <laughs> harass a lot of people at the back, but that was wasted really, because nobody else is with him. If you look at the map there, the Ruckus and everybody else has died, um, and that was a waste because there's still that 20 seconds. He, he's probably going to die before he can contest the point. If he was going to use the ultimate, he'd probably be in the last few seconds of this payload. 
push, um, but now that was actually just a waste because um, it probably won't have any effect. And even if they try and take it over now, the Mako is out of the fight. So what's going to happen is probably his ally team is going to die one by one. It obviously depends on how good the enemy are at doing it. Um, but yeah, the, the enemy were able to defend that one successfully. It's still 3-1, so still going well for Hal, but that was a bit of a mistake using that ultimate at that moment. He should have saved it for the siege point, which is most effective. I think that actually because they're so um, they're so good on the siege points that they probably think, oh, we may as well use it to push because uh, we don't need it on the siege point. But you just got to be a little bit careful. I wonder if we can, we can see actually who's got their ultimates now. And a big one that could have an effect here. Oh, no, I was going to say Sky has it, but I was reading above. So Victor has it. The one that's big, I guess, that could really... Uh, and disrupt them all so if the Maldamba uses their ultimate um, that makes them all run away and be take more damage and maybe the Victor use their ultimate on that point um, and do a lot there oh actually I see no I'm 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 completely misreading it what the, there's two two oh I see because there's two teams so you can see both of the ultimates okay that's fine the Maldamba doesn't have their ultimate so it's fine I think they've actually got this point most likely um, there goes the sky ultimate I think yeah that, that just no no sorry it looked like it was a sky ultimate but it wasn't actually our team here is taking quite a beating um, he's done the right thing by trying to run away but obviously chased down by the Fernando there there wasn't a lot they could do about that sorry by the way if there's any like pause it's probably because I've been coughing because I'm still a bit ill uh, from the flu but they probably have lost this point point. Um, one big thing that they don't have here is the Makoa's ultimate. Uh, that was actually a great hook on the, the victor. I don't think necessarily they were aiming uh, for just that victor. It's just sort of generally into the, the group, but that was an amazing hook because it just dragged them so far out. And the victor is one of the squishy ones. And again, this this is a bit better. He's going for the Meldamba there. It was The Meldamba was quite, pretty quick, and he'd just come out of his um, movement, so it was a bit of a harder hook. Um, <clears throat> a bit of a weird one there, like the Fernando just bugged a bit and didn't go through the shield. And I think that actually, the he tried to save himself with the shield, which you can do. It's like a last ditch effort. You basically try and use the shield and move so that the enemy can't enter inside your shield. Otherwise, you are pretty screwed. But there wasn't much hope there. Um, but he was definitely going to die otherwise. And again, now we can see that the allies are taking up positions, trying to hold that choke point. The sky's gone 1v1 on Makoa. That is not the bloody. That's a bit weird. Okay, so the Sky uses ultimate. Tried to kill the Makara, failed. Actually, they, well, they did kill the Makara in the end, but it was a, a, an odd ultimate. I've never seen. I don't think I've seen in a game before a Sky solo ultimate somebody. But actually, look at that. It, it's worked. Um, I think the problem here is that this uh, Rook has gone in to try and contest, contest it. Um, maybe just getting back behind this line where the Makara is now. Um, and then trying to contest it would have been better. It's just Sometimes you do have to retreat and get out of there. And this was one of those times. Unfortunate there, the defense uh, didn't hold. But it's 3-3. And now our Makoa, Howl, has his ultimate to try and use. I think the problem here is the Trickle and our, our, the, this group, who are a death ball comp, are struggling uh, to basically get onto the point as a group where they are most powerful. And if we look, we actually have two ultimates in our team. We've got the Drogos, who is going to definitely kill somebody. and But the Fernando has their ultimate as well, so that's probably going to be countered. That's quite interesting. Let's see what um, the Hal has taken. So actually, he has itemized into the Haven. I think it's a big thing for this game. We've got only... Well, we've actually got two champions that are blast damage and then three that are direct. But definitely the Victor is putting out a lot on uh, the Makara at the moment. And... Uh, it's hard to notice, but it, it does trickle on him from quite far away. Um, the enemy team have all itemized up for Haven as well. That's why the damage is lowered. And the healing as well from the Ying is being countered, which means that the Death Ball is slightly being countered. The Victor has Wrecker for... Well, to be honest, it doesn't matter that much on the Makoa. The ultimate there is probably needed, actually. Uh, able to kill the Sky there with a good hook as well, I think, and this is good. You're basically just chasing down the squishy ones, ignore that Fernando, you don't need to deal with that. Let your damaged characters deal with the Fernando, and then obviously coming back from now, uh, the, the Victor, Victor was a big problem for them, so it was good to get that damage out of the way, and no course rides on them anymore, able to heal straight up again. A nice little emote there, but I think that really the 
the tanks here could have been a bit more aggressive going forwards and stopping them from uh, coming. Nobody actually in this team is knocking them off the horses. The Cassie should definitely be out there trying not to knock off the horses. Drogos using their fire spit. And actually they've been caught out there in the Meldumba ultimate. And that worked. That could have done a lot more to them. And now as well they're stuck in the Fernando ultimate where everyone is uh, immortal. But um, not over yet. Um, but actually I think he's going to die here and uh, all the rest of the team are in trouble too. Uh, let's see. So the Ying is actually still on it and the Fernando is the only one up but the Fernando is the one on the point at the moment. Uh, half health. Um, I would come out of third person but I don't want to knock everyone else off and uh, lose our Makoa visage. So uh, they didn't pick up any, they picked up a morale boost there. I think they actually picked it up when they respawn it. I don't know whether they're going to get their ultimate over um, in this third point. Maybe. Um, Maybe it's just because, maybe I itemized the, the Haven there uh, over the morale boost because it isn't going to be that long. Um, I don't think there's any way that they could really get it. But there was a victory uh, generally played well by Hal there. Some things using the ultimate timings was probably a bit out. I think they're definitely sa saving it for sieges or using it at the start of rounds rather than at the end of rounds so that you can actually regenerate it is often a good idea. Um, but let's see what the damage done. So Hal did okay. Like, I mean, they are the tanks, so 52k damage. Actually, the Ruckus did quite a, a low amount of damage for what a Ruckus would normally put out. So it was actually good that the uh, Makoa could keep up with the, the Ruckus there. That's quite impressive, actually. 24-7. Uh, to 7. The enemy team weren't completely pushed over, but they didn't have as much sustain on the point with just a Fernando. So they did quite well. But th things to learn, the things that Hal did well was hooking and pulling to the side and even jumping and pulling them round to the back so they were completely behind him uh, to get as much stun as possible but also that they need to run basically into the Makoa again to try and get away and your your cannon is great at hitting somebody close up. I think some of the things he could have pulled some squishier champions at, at times especially t towards the beginning a lot of the time squishier champions like the Victor and the, this guy were firing from above and that was the perfect moment for Makoa to drag them down and really put an end to any of that damage. And also using those ultimates was a bit timed, uh, a bit uh, oddly, and like he used it in a push where they were definitely already getting it. Um, but yeah, generally good. And I think this has worked out a bit better spectating the match. The spectator cam is slightly buggy. It looks, the, the aim doesn't look quite as normal as it does on the, the player's screen, um, but generally quite good. And also I can't watch the cooldowns as easily. Um, and also it is a bit confusing because it's blue team and red team and this time we were red team so I was watching the ultimates and things and getting a bit confused but uh, that'll, that'll be okay next time I use a spectator, it's just a, a one-off I guess. Anyway, what does everyone else think about these coaching episodes? Do you think they're helpful? And, <clears throat> and if you want to be watched and coached then hit me up on Discord because I basically just go into Discord say, does anyone want to be watched today? And then I just go into game, put slash spectate and watch somebody play a game. I had to wait about 10 minutes for this one to start, um, but it was quite fun. It says it's on Ice Mines, that's a complete load of bollocks. Um, but anyway, uh, anyway, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit that like button. If you thought it was rubbish, dislike it. If you want to see more of my content, hit that subscribe button. And thank you all very much for watching. Till next time. Joshino.